This week, Amazon shut down someone's smart home after a delivery driver misheard what he thought was racism coming from the doorbell. And I think I speak for the whole boys cast when I say, good. Although it was a false alarm this time, what happens the next time when a delivery driver hears, hero, delivery, hero, from the white inhabitants while they're pulling their eyes to the side in a racist fashion? Or a doorbell that's been programmed into a caricature of a black woman saying, go, you know you better leave that food on the ground, I'll be hungry. Those houses need to be shut down. And those people and their doorbells will now think twice after Amazon sending a warning shot to anyone that wants to make racist remarks and have their house still work. Programming your doorbell to say, hey, leave the package at the door, me so sleepy, it's not okay. Whoever does that should have the house shut down and their door permanently locked so other members of the KKK can't get in for the racism summit they're likely holding in their basement. And before they can program their doorbell to say, leave package and show bobs, please open, and I'm not talking about delivery, please open, show bobs. Racism and sexism, power up their microwave and their TV so they can't get any more of the racist fix. And since you brought up sexism, Ryan, what about the guy who programmed his door to say, a woman in the workforce, now I've seen everything. The least Amazon can do is shut that guy's toaster down. Shut down that sexist before he can tell the female delivery driver to make him a sandwich before dropping two pieces of bread and some lunch meats on her head from the roof. Thank you, Amazon, for preemptively preventing those lunch meats from being covered all over that woman of color's head. Although we don't like the police, I do think Amazon should be the racism police. In Turn the taps of those racists off. And if they want water, they can get it at the racism factory where they probably work. If you ask me, turn them off now. Better safe than sorry. The boys. It's the boys cast. The lads. It's the boys cast. The dudes. Prepare yourself for boys cast. The pros. It's the boys cast. The homies. It's the boys cast. The dudes. It's the The Boys Cast in the house with your boy Ryan Law, yeah. Daniel Polish Chuck. Yeah. 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 We are in the house. So this in the hizzy. This thing actually blew me away. Bill Gates in the most villainous move of all time. Mm -hmm. So Bill Gates' whole thing is like, I'm not a villain, right? Yeah. People are like, you are a villain. He's like, if I'm such a villain, why am I starting a <laughs> mosquito factory? So Bill Gates essentially has uh, a mosquito <laughs> factory where he's cranking out like 20 milli mosquitoes uh, a day. Yeah, I'm pretty pro Bill Gates on this one. You're sort of liking the mosquito factory. I had dengue fever. 20 million of your dick. <laughs> Dude, I literally had. He may, he, he's making these uh, super mosquitoes That's what to happened. Danny pulls, his, fever. Danny pulls his dick out <laughs> and then the girl goes over yanking out with Bill Gates' <laughs> factory. A bit of a bite on you. Yeah, he's trying to he's trying to rid the world of dengue fever. I'm sure a lot of people are like, yeah, you really believe that's what he's doing? That's what I'm saying, though. It's like, if I had this idea where it's like, all I have to do is make 20 million mosquitoes a day and unleash them, and there's some way that'll help cure dengue fever, I go, you know what? It's not the move. <laughs> It's like, if you had an idea where you go, you know how you can cure sunscreen is just put Legos in the sand at every beach. <laughs> yeah. If you put nails in apples on that are delivered on Halloween, it's like yeah. a really solid move in order to make kids healthier. <laughs> Razor blades and apples <laughs> in chocolate bars. What's well, crazy. Yeah. So it's like, the, probably the most- I mean, this is some real Dr. Frankenstein That's what I'm saying. Right Imagine telling someone, people are like, listen, buddy, you're this guy's a villain. And you're like- uh, oh, as if I'm a, as you stand there in front of the mosquito king. Well, oh, uh, you're telling me the mosquito king is a villain. Yeah, he goes. Bzz, you wouldn't mess with Bill Gates. Tell me, I'm telling me, I'm a villain, huh? Just holding up mosquitoes and just fucking putting them into a ball. This is what he says. Yeah, he goes, it's going to... Basically, they put something in the mosquitoes that then meets with the other mosquitoes. Some they put a bacteria in the mosquitoes, yeah. and then they make those mosquitoes, they release them to go fuck with the the dengue mosquitoes, and then they can't have dengue fever. We'll anymore. see. I mean, that's how I got dengue fever. Is you goddamn, know goddamn skeeter bit me. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, this is, this is one step away from him being like, you know what would really help if we had, like, just swarms of locusts <laughs> <laughs> just following me around? And he said, yeah, it was Zika... Um, Chingaguawa, yellow fever, which I thought we're not supposed to say anymore, but a no. Bill Gates apparently doesn't care it's about a that. Different I don't know kind how mosquitoes going to cure that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how mosquitoes supposed to cure that. 
That, it's, I think what happened was he was like basically because he used to go to that island all the time with his hedge fund buddies, yeah. right? And then, you Jeffrey know, Epstein. I, I'm not saying names. I'm Epst just saying Epstein Island. <laughs> he used to have a couple buddies that he would go to an island with, and then I think what happened was he's like missing the island, and he was like, "Well, if we get some mosquitoes kicking, I can sort of create the island vibe." Yeah. He goes get some mosquitoes, man. I'm very pro this only because apparently because I've had dengue fever before. If I ever get it again, I have like a one in twenty chance of dying. So I'm well, pro, sure. pro Bill Gates right now on this well, one. <laughs> he says basically it's like uh, uh, it's supposed to be essentially they've put like almost like a vaccine. Well, it's not technically a vaccine, but I guess none of his vaccines <laughs> it's are. It's just a gene therapy. <laughs> it's not a vaccine. I guess okay. none of his vaccines are technically yeah, vaccines. Yeah, they're not vaccines, okay? So what's your situation? When did you get it again? I got it in uh, 2007. I got dengue fever when I was in um, Laos. Yeah. On the way to Laos, Very gay fever. it really stinks. <laughs> it really sucked a lot. <laughs> it was definitely the sickest I've ever. Everyone been. they're with, they're like, "Okay, you've got den fever. You've got den fever, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> it's den gay fever." Oh, well, they had den. They had den fever. And then <laughs> everybody was calling me Den instead of Dan. And then <laughs> Dan gay fever. Oh. If you were calling you, yeah, Dan gay. And Danny. So what? Ha so what happened? You just were I was, out of we, commission we, for a little bit. We took a boat, and then uh, we took this boat from um, Thailand, northern Thailand, to to Laos or whatever. And then I guess like because there's mosquitoes everywhere. It's not like all of a sudden there's just like there was no mosquitoes. Oh, uh, Danny got a bit of a virus <laughs> leaving Thailand. It had nothing to do with Thailand. It was anything. It was on the boat on the way from oh, Thailand. It was, definitely on the, it. it was definitely on the boat. I got a virus r immediately after I left Thailand. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I was like by far the sickest I've ever been. Like I basically went from having in this doesn't even say it would cure dengue. Yes, it did. That's it says Zika, Chungamama, and yellow fever. Oh, I read. Uh, they said dengue in there. Maybe they just, he's trying to say it'll cure everything. This is the dengue one, and dengue is like the it, like it, it, it doesn't kill a crazy amount of people, but infects a tons of tons of um, people. <laughs> this is him with his mosquitoes, <laughs> Bill Gates. Uh, and you fly, my pretty. Yeah, exactly. And he does like one of these, and they all. This is what I, this is the type of thing you'd be like. You'd be like, no. And then I looked at the website and it was BillGates.com. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly thought this was propaganda until I read the website name. Yeah, yeah. I was I was really to hate this. And then he just he struck a chord with me. <laughs> you li you're liking it. <laughs> After Dengue Fever. But it's like, yeah, it, I mean, it is a diabolical. It's if diabolical. He's able, if he's able to really pull this off, too. And then the question is, yeah, I wonder it's if the there's only gonna way, way more mosquitoes. It. it sucks, though. Like, the people who, like, get this a lot live in, like, the jungle. And they have to, every like everything has to be covered in mosquito netting it's the only way they can do it and then the worst part when we were there they're like yeah, all these people are dying because they like can't even afford a net right <laughs> and you're like damn that sucks but uh yeah they it's uh if it works i mean i don't know if it's gonna work i'm against it you're against it it just seems like if, if we were at a boardroom and people were proposing ideas i'd be like well we must have something else yeah yeah this is kind of uh you ever see kids <laughs> in the hall brain candy it's like almost one it's of those things where they go listen there's like a we need to put this uh protein out in the you know the wild or whatever for the mosquitoes to get and you're like what do you think and maybe we put it in the food like maybe we get it to the people and be like i'm thinking more mosquitoes yeah I mean, I will say this. What if it doesn't even work where the mosquitoes get, they, they go to the mate with the other mosquitoes. Now you just have double the mosquitoes. Double mosquitoes. Fever. Potentially more, yeah. Um, 20 million a day. That's, yeah, that's so many mosquitoes. <laughs> 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 the crazy thing is, is like mosquito nets cost five bucks nah. retail. Yeah, go buy everyone more nets. Like, honestly, if you just went and bought everybody nets, like that actually would would solve it. But I guess they're just like, we're going to do it from the super villain, like, the, the top from the Even top if, rope. If I was, yes, if it is from the top rope, if I was Bill Gates and I was like funding this, I would at least be like, let's keep my name off this puppy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I want like he probably I think Bill Gates is very much in a state of shock at how quickly he's publicly become this villain. Of course. I don't think he's prepared he was ever prepared for this uh this kind of life as a villain. No, I don't think so either. He was he was just thinking like everything I do I'm going to get. Well, cuz he was like I'm going to cure malaria and I'm I'm going to do all this and blah 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 and then all of a sudden everybody's like we hate you, Bill Gates. Well, it, all every supervillain has something that they need to cure the earth of. That's the classic <laughs> supervillain thing. <laughs> It's like, you need to cure the earth of evil. You need to cure the, you know, basically you need to rid the scum. Like, yeah. he's just the, the billionaire version of the guy with angel wings on the girl in his basement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
that he's releasing the mosquitoes on her to cleanse her. Ugh. He's just the he's what the billionaire version looks like. He's like, well, I can't actually be out there, you know, having girls in my basement and get away with it. So it's like I need to have the mosquitoes on mass scale, and I need a reason for it. The likely scenario here too is that it doesn't work, and then there's some second order effect that nobody knew anything. How about, about. this for a second order effect? More mosquitoes. <laughs> I mean, honestly, with the the parts. <laughs> How is that not enough of a second order effect? The twenty million a day more mosquitoes. Yeah, the parts of the world though that have these amount of mosquitoes. No, it's going to be something else. It's going to be like some animal is going to be eating all these mosquitoes, and it's going to grow like super large and like aggressive from this like new, just like all you can right. eat buffet of mosquitoes or something. <laughs> the and the that, lizards. Like it's going to be something like that where they go, yeah, we didn't see that coming. Do you see That's that coming though? The lizards, because lizards eat mosquitoes. That's what I'm right? saying. Yeah. Um, put two and two together. Lizard people. Bit of a feast for him and his pals. <laughs> <laughs> the lizard people. It's crazy. Speaking of side, of side effects, so I was in uh, uh, a small town hotel, yeah. and I was watching the w- watching the uh, commercials. So they basically have all these new drugs, right? And I guess that, like the people have said that it's like the, oh, the pharmaceutical companies basically own these stations. You know yeah, what I they mean? Own everything, yeah. Well, the funny part is like so the commercial. Is two minutes, it's like basically 30 seconds of being like, try this new drug, and then a minute and a half of every side effect. Yeah, yeah. This, this one was like killing me. It's called uh, Rex Ulti. To the, I had to go look up the commercial afterwards because I was like, honestly, in my hotel room fucking crying. What's it called? Uh, Rex Ulti. Rex Ulti. Okay, listen to this. Build on your progress. Rexulti can cause serious side effects. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke. Antidepressants may increase suicidal thoughts and actions and worsen depression in children and young adults. Report fever, stiff muscles, and confusion, which can... This is a depression medication. Control. Oh, that's a depression medication. <laughs> so, legitimately, it's a p- depression medication, and the number one side effect is <laughs> worse depression. <laughs> in kids. <laughs> They go, they, they're like, take, and the, the, it starts up, and for, listen to this. This is what the medication's for, right? It's a medication that you take on top of your normal me, uh, depression it's medication. To soup up your meds. So it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, if someone's on depression medication, but they need a little extra juice, this is a second depression medication that works with your sec- other depression medication that you're already taking, and the side effect is that it might make you more depressed. But it might not <laughs> make you more depressed, Ryan. <laughs> Yo, Sometimes so, you're so depressed, you got to roll the dice like that. You know, so you got to be like, uh. <laughs> it's like, why is the first option if you're on depression medication? Like, what are they, Ritalin or Lithiol or whatever uh, they call it? Uh, yeah, Xana. Ten trillion whatever. of them, right? Yeah, yeah, so if you're on that medication and you go, it's not working, instead of being like, okay, let's try a different one, because at the very least, what, like, what, if it's not working that good, like, why keep doing the first one? So their pitch is take this other one on top of that one, and they go, what are the side effects? Suicidal thoughts and more depression. What happens if you just take that one? I don't That's think, what I want to know. I don't think you can get it prescribed like that. This is a oh, fucking, this is like this, this is, is the spoiler this, on your depression medication. This is basically like <laughs> this is your last chance, you right here. This is <laughs> you better you take this. Well, why? It, you're like if this doesn't work, you're just like you're on your own. Okay, we tried everything. This is twenty inch rims. Lord. Yeah, yeah. Find the Lord. Find the Lord. Lord. Yeah, that's like your literal last salvation. I just don't get why you would ever need a me- me- depression medication on top of your other med- depression medication. It's like just stop taking the first one and try a new one. Yeah. But just the idea of you're like taking two different depression medications that the side effect is more depression. And it was like, <laughs> at some point, at the, you know, this is this is how it starts. And the next thing you know, you go, how about just a fucking trillion mosquitoes in the world? <laughs> you know, what? that's a good idea. Mosquitoes that solve depression. There you, you just go. have to get bit by like, remember, there's like a thing for a while where people who had like, I can't remember, it was like arthritis and then they're stinging them with bees. Uh, remember that where they would just like grab a bee with tweezers and they would just sting their hand and they go, yeah, my arthritis is fixed. That is pretty wild. T- temporarily. I don't think it was like oh, an actual Oh, it just cure. solves it for a second. Yeah. So then maybe you just need depression is you just need your fit. Remember Tom Green when he got stung by all those mosquitoes, like a million mosquitoes stung him in the desert. Uh-huh. Just kind of like that. Oh, I thought there was more to that. No, that's just that's the cure. <laughs> did he say he was less depressed? Uh, probably not. No, if anything, it probably did. <laughs> I don't think I mean like mosquito bites would make me less depressed. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. <laughs> Well, you'd have something else. It's like one of those things, you know, when you have one pain and then you just like make a new one. Yeah. Uh, and if you can just like remove your focus from one to the other, maybe that's what you need. So basically in China right now, it's become like a meme, like pretty a big, uh, you know, on TV, like a big taking over their internet and stuff like that. But like making fun of white people food. Yeah. And they call it the lunch of attacked. suffering. 
I did feel it. I'll tell you what. <laughs> you go, leave my beans out of this, okay? Well, you come the, after the beans, you come after me. The, I'll tell you what, the, the part about this that's more ridiculous, they, so it becomes white people food, and they say it's a lunch of suffering, and all <laughs> the things they show look good. Yeah. So there's two parts of it. One is they're saying, like, healthy white people food. Like, they're kind of saying, like, you know, some vegetable sticks Yeah, and it was stuff like, like here's, that. like, a handful of spinach and some like, carrots. But the other one, they're just like, White bread sandwiches. They're basically saying Lunchables, yeah. which aren't particularly good for you. Yeah, the, Lunchables. That was the one where I go, yeah, y- y- y'all are tripping on this. Cra- one, crackers you know? and cheese. They're like, oh my God, I have to eat crackers and cheese. Used to be so lucky. <laughs> What are you eating? As opposed to the fucking, what are they eating? Like a crickets, fucking bowl of fish eyes? A bunch of fried crickets and fish eyes. <laughs> They think they're fucking better than us. They do think they're better than us. <laughs> These people in China making fun of my my delectables. I'm sure they wouldn't. I'm sure they wouldn't like. Uh, although I guess yeah, if there was like some trend on TikTok of like Americans being like. Crazy with all these Chinese. I guess they're yeah. They, they would be like oh, TikTok would be like it delete it. TikTok would delete. Yeah, imagine it was like imagine I'm eating this. Dude, was- literally every Chinese thing is go. Oh, here's a new trend in uh, Chinese food eating. It's like a thing that's alive that's walking <laughs> away, and then someone grabs a fork and they go, not so fast. And literally they stab it, bring it back, and just eat it while it's alive. While There's it's, like so shrieking. many of those girls. Yeah. <laughs> It's wild, right? Yeah. And then those girls, the they same, yeah, the same people with like the the octopus tendrils are l- uh, yeah, releasing. Yeah, yeah. They get back in there. <laughs> They're like, imagine I eat a cracker and salami. Yeah, he goes, this is so depressing. <laughs> a sandwich. <laughs> I don't know how this caught on, but. Yeah. Cool, cool. They're trend. they're legitimately just posting a bunch of good food. Yeah, they, when, I they, mean, some of it was like you're like these people are on diets. Well, some of it was like a bag of lettuce. Or some whatever. of it was that, like yeah, there's like I an got. anorexic person on a diet. The first part of it I got where they were like saying it's healthy. They were just like oh, I'm doing like a you know white Hollywood girl diet, which is like a you know yeah. a bag of lettuce to stay healthy. That part I get why it was funny. But why are you bringing crackers and cheese into this? Like that's some fucking torch Chinese water torch. You think there's payback for the bat stuff? All the bat <laughs> jokes. They go. Oh, yeah, you want to make fun of our bat soup? Oh, look at me. I'm a white person eating my cracker. Saltines, the greatest snack ever d- invented. Oh, I'm a white person. I hate government. This is, my, <laughs> this is my cracker. I hate the government. I love the gays. Yeah. The saltines actually are such a good... Tr- the s- saltines are so good that I can only buy them once every two shops because I, I know yeah. that they're bad news for I love me. saltines. It's so crazy, though. But so, I eat the bag. They're amazing, <laughs> but then the unsalted ones are the worst things that's ever I don't mind ever, unsalted, that's dude. Ever I'll fucking been... take down a sleeve of unsalted, of without, unsalted? Blinking, without blinking, what? pal. That's crazy. A sleeve of any saltines. You get there, no match for me, man. Yeah. it's The unsalted ones are horrible, but the salted ones are so good. I turn them, I try, I'm like the girl with the octopus. I, uh, what are you trying to, when your drop's on the floor, are you trying to get away, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not so fast, saltines. <laughs> saltines are no match. I'm, it's a win, I'm eating them in the storm. They do have some nerve on them, though, for coming after our food. Coming after fucking crackers and cheese lunchables. Literally, like, there's just four million videos of them torturing an animal. <laughs> uh, the China's, it, basically, Asian countries in general have been getting wild crackdown on comedy yeah there's like so basically there's i think we might have mentioned one or two of these but there's like three things in a row because and friends of ours too yeah so basically uncle roger yeah he got like banned from chinese period yep yeah he's he's been uh he's in a lot of trouble there's a com comedians are getting they get they don't like when the comedians start to get salty over there no 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 they don't uh, who was who in the okay? So uh, yeah, yeah. Uncle Roger, uh, basically, what he did was uh, he was he was what he said was he was like sarcastically he was like China is no no and it's a really good country like I have to say that now I'm gonna get canceled they're like and that that's what he basically got taken down for but he did get canceled yes he was <laughs> <laughs> well, he talked about it on this show that he got canceled for, for well they see it as like here you are the equivalent of like saying like uh, oh I can't talk about the fact that the election got stolen yeah, and yeah, they were yeah. just like yeah you can't do that either yeah yeah, yeah 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 sarcasm not allowed no, well, no, that, no, so that's what happened that. and then they took him down and then Jocelyn Chia do you know Jocelyn I never met her I know she is, but I so I know Jocelyn pretty well, and I've seen her do this joke, and it's like, what you would consider by America like crazy tame in terms of yeah. like it's uh, basically it's like 
She's going. She's saying uh, Malaysia. She's. I think she's from Singapore. She's, she's from Singapore. She's saying Malaysia. And Singapore and Malaysia have some big history. And she's basically saying like Singapore's better or whatever. Yeah. And she was like, oh. Uh, and then a, the a part of the punchline is without giving away her whole joke is like the the planes are bad because of the Singapore. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Like Malaysia third. Basically, she was like Malaysia's a third world country, and then their planes disappear. And then on top, and people of, are like, not cool. You think that's. The, so basically, they're trying to get Interpol to come for her right now. I saw that. She got is, deleted from Instagram because she got that's because she got like mass flag. She got deleted from all her all these platforms. They took down the Comedy Cellar website. The Comedy Cellar website got <laughs> like DDoSed and like was literally down. And the Comedy Cellar got four thousand one star reviews. And not only that, <laughs> but like she was supposed to appear at like West uh, West Side or whatever comedy club, uh, like on the okay. Upper West Side. And they were getting like threatened to just having her on a poster. Like, dude, Malaysia is like, I, I, I want to say it's like 200 million people or something. Why? Which the thing I don't understand is all the people, like I was reading about it, and a lot of the people, the comments were like, you don't get it. You're like, everybody in Malaysia knows somebody who like died. And you're like, there's like 300 people on that flight, and there's 200 <laughs> sure. million of you. Like, how's that even possible? Of course, yeah. yeah. I watched that documentary. It was wild. But the fact that everyone, the, the level from which they, they're literally trying to get, Interpol to come snatch her up so she can go to Malaysian jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, those Muslim countries—they don't fuck around. I know, so you don't—they don't fuck around. Yeah, yeah. And then there was um, this is the funny part. So, and then Isaac Butterfield basically had the same thing where his Human Rights Tribunal, which is more of the Canadian one. That yeah. was that was a little more of like a Western, you know, calling him uh, like the Western he sort just, of yeah, said something <clears throat> bad, offensive, and right? We just, we just want money. But the crazy part that was kind of making me think about all this stuff, which is like so funny, is if you think about it, it's like most people in America, if you talk to them that, you know, because Americans in like the Western world pretty like on aggregate pro censorship or whatever. Yeah. But if you actually talk to them, they would probably be like, this is not good. Like if the fact that the Chinese government's kicking people off or criticizing it, they'd all be like, that's crazy over there. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you're like the Malaysian wants to like put her in jail for this, they'd be like, that's crazy. Right. And then you go, what about yours? They're, it's almost like uh, people in like the Western world are like. Everything like worse censorship wise is bad. It's like but they go the amount all the like government censorship here is actually the perfect amount. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they go, you do it just it's Goldilocks. You, exactly. It's, it's they go, what about Malaysian censorship? No. <laughs> uh, you never see those memes where it's like, no, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the 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 Chinese government censoring the citizens, no. You know what I mean? The like Iranian government censoring the citizens, no. The American government censoring the citizens. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just right. It's, the perfect is just it's all it's it's bad in those cases but here they fucking nailed it yeah, yeah, yeah. it's I, like not a little bit more a little bit less you go what about when this is more okay well then that was the perfect amount we <laughs> we hadn't quite got to the perfect amount yeah i mean it is crazy like the malay like the fact that because i don't even she's an american citizen because that was the whole thing like the craziest thing with the justin chia thing was that it had made it to the highest level of their governments of both of the governments i know like, they were like in well, their, you could say that here about like alex jones essentially but I'm saying like in Malaysian parliament they were commenting on a joke that was going viral essentially like in their parliament like they were having to denounce it and like the Singaporean government was like she's no longer a citizen of this country they took her citizenship away no 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 she renounced it because she was born in America and then I think she got it and then I think she gave it back or whatever oh. whatever from the sounds of it I don't know the exact story but from the sounds of it she said she's like I, I, I renounced my citizenship and they didn't strip me of it but like the Singaporean government was literally like we have to distance ourselves from this comedian and they're like she's not a citizen of singapore like she was born in america <laughs> like just everybody chill out it's so everybody just cool it yeah so obviously it's like way worse over there when you, you think about it but it's just so funny that you, you like everyone could be like see when it's bad there but just here you'd be like it's actually perfectly good <laughs> Because it's not obvious. This is where people always go like comedians can't say anything. And it was like, Kurt talks about this a lot, but it's like, it's kind of the opposite. It was like comedians, like to some degree, still can. The mud, the water gets murky because a lot of people say they're doing it for comedy, but it's actually more politics. And then it just all gets a little murky or whatever. But like, they, there it's like, you were like, no, I'm a comedian. They're like, what the fuck do we care? We yeah, like, yeah, they don't give a shit. They're <laughs> like, you've insulted our country. Oh, you think that you're going to pass because you're doing comedy? Yeah, yeah. They, no, they're they definitely don't give a shit like she can't 
step foot. Like it's not like Ari where Ari like did his Kobe Bryant thing and then six months later like and everybody's like like what was it like the Crips and the Bloods like put out of where like Well I would get if the citizens Ari. were really mad at her. It's the government getting involved in No like the a, citizens are mad at her of No that part I get but, but I'm saying like that's a, you know, the citizens can be mad if they want to be mad. She's you know whatever she made a joke to call yeah, them yeah, yeah. But like, crap, country crappy. But like with the Ari thing like they were like the Bloods and the Crips are going to kill him but six months later like nobody gave a shit. I don't think she can go back to a Malaysia for a fucking 20 years probably yeah like and be comfortable at all like she's not going back to malaysia like that's that's over and like probably singapore is like probably like we don't want any be part of you either what a bonkers, <laughs> bonkers thing. it's like that one i don't feel like they're gonna forget like it's like the salman rushdie thing salman rushdie like put out one book like 30 years ago and then some guy stabbed him in the fucking face last year yeah. over, over it you know like <laughs> like they don't like <laughs> yeah yeah exactly they're not letting that shit cool no down. they'd probably be like they would do you know how the the videos uh, <laughs> like um you know how they always do the racist videos where it's basically like racist gets the shit kicked out of him and they just don't show anything racist just a guy getting beat up yeah. some of them are like literally like you know Woman says the N word, then gets decked by her husband, and is like, <laughs> "You just a girl getting punched in the face." Yeah, yeah. Yo, where's the context of this? Yo, this is the whole video, actually. <laughs> Racist woman gets mugged by nine guys for saying the N word. <laughs> well, I mean, they're just trying to make that video. Yeah, they're trying to make it palatable. They want, yeah, they want you to. They want you to watch the video. So you go, yeah, she should have it coming. Well, then people, you watch it, and you're like, I think she was the victim. People but. actually like seeing bad things happening to people, but they need some just. They need to be like, yeah. it's like, oh, am I just watching a guy get tortured? You're like, come bring it in, <laughs> yeah. guy. Just what fucking, did he do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it in. You go, that guy said some racist. You go, ooh, I thought I might not be the good guy oh, for a second. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, was, I thought I was about to watch a good guy get beheaded. But that's what the government should probably does in those places where they have like a beheading and then they have like a banner that like uh, critiquing girl who critiques the government gets beheaded and everyone's like, oh, well, then of course, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <obviously. laughs> I mean, I, th I thought you were just beheading people. It's like, <laughs> I didn't know that they did all that. They, tr you, they did what? They tried, they, and they're like, they actually talk shit about you. Yeah. And you go, oh, like, you, okay. <laughs> okay. Good thing. Well, then <laughs> give me my popcorn. Yeah. Then get her up on the cross. Hey, okay. Uh, Trudeau licks his lips when he sees those things. <laughs> Trudeau watches, like, the Singapore government be, like, uh, you know, uh, clamping down on people and kicking them off social media. He's fucking just, like, yeah. he's just getting a boner. He's probably calling them up, being like, any How'd you tips? Do any tips <laughs> for us? Uh,. <laughs> Just anything we could maybe do differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, you, you're you going to want to start with bringing back capital punishment. And he's like, ooh, that's going to be a tough sell. Oh, it's going to be a tough sell. Oh, that's going to be a tough sell in Canada right now. Anything else? And they go, oh. How'd you do it, boys? <laughs> Come on. Don't fuck with me. I want to know. You know how the other last thing it was these countries that like, yeah, what one thing that is so like weird is like, because they give all this like money to the arts or whatever, but they only give it like to political people. It's like, there's something specifically egregious about giving um, giving government money to people that are thought leaders. Yeah, because that's like straight up putting your fucking thumb on the of scale. Of course, of course. You know what oh. I mean? It's 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 one, it's one step away from being like the government donates a certain amount of money to like a like a, like one of the parties. Yeah, but I mean, again, if you're the government and you're in charge of that, like, why would you give money? Like, all, like I mean. Like obviously in a like a fair society, which is probably like doesn't really exist, but like why would you give money to like some artists who are gonna go trash you and maybe get you out of office? Well, ideally, it's because you're not uh, you're a separate board that has like management that's not tied into one yeah. of the political parties. Yeah, I don't think that works anywhere. We at the Boys Cast have a new sponsor, and that is Gooder. Now, this is one specifically that I was very pumped to do because they make $25 active sunglasses that don't slip, don't bounce, and are 100% polarized. Now, for me personally, I actually lose a pair of sunglasses anytime I go anywhere. Yeah. So to me, that was the big benefit of them. And right now, I picked out four. So I was, I literally have like four of these sunglasses right now. I've been actually sort of rotating them in yeah, and out. Nice. So I'm actually, I think it's like, this company is like super, super up my alley of the type of thing that I would wear yeah, regardless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty into the gooder sunglasses. And the thing is they come with like cool case. They come with a cool pouch. They come with a cool uh, package if you get it as like a gift or whatever. But I'm very pro this sponsor. So they're lightweight, comfortable, 100% polarized, stylish, and they have a whole crap load of uh varieties if you want to check them all out pages full of them if you're active or running they don't slip or bounce 
easy to clean. Stylus Sunnies starting at 25 bucks a pair, one year warranty, 30 day free returns. Oof. So that's the other thing. Yeah, if you wanted to get a couple and yeah. you didn't like the one we wanted them or whatever, you know what I mean? 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Gooder is a 100% carbon neutral company. And if you're like me, you're, you know, potentially buying these. I, I was off. I was, I, well, I thought I'd be the expensive yeah, sunglass expensive guy for a bit. Guy. And to be honest, no, they no, barely no. look different. Yeah, you know. know what I mean? Sometimes they have a logo or whatever, but the move is to just get a tons of pairs. And I have them, like, you put them basically uh, just on my, like, windowsill area. I just have, like, a cr- bunch of them sitting there. And if I'm petting out, you just have them take one. Yeah, yeah. Worst comes to worst, you lose one, and then you're back to the next. You know what yeah, I mean? that's why you get a bunch, but, of, a bunch of extras. These ones are sick anyway. It's like they all, you know, they look like the expensive yeah. ones anyway. So this is a brand I really like. Thought you might enjoy them as much as I do. And they're always releasing new colors, new collabs, so you can lay low or get wild. And their names, they got Ginger's Soul. So they're sort of funny names, too. <laughs> $9 pour over, donkey goggles, all performance sunnies. Great for running, cycling, working out, golfing, going to the beach, hiking, or just chilling. They fit perfectly well if you're wearing a hat, from exercise to errands to sunset. I love the Gooders. Now, if you want to support the show, pick up a pair. Gooder is giving the Boys Cast listeners free shipping on your first Ooh. order. So come on. if you're This is something that you're probably already getting. Summer's coming up. You might as well support the show. Use Gooder. I threw the link in the show notes, and you'll see me supporting them on social, too. You can go to gooder.com slash boyscast and use the code boyscast to get free shipping. Gooder offers a 30-day money-back guarantee and 100% satisfaction. Find your pair at gooder.com slash boyscast and use the code boyscast to get free shipping. And now that it's summer, you might be out there looking for convenient, wholesome, conventional meals for sunny, active days. Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. It's number one right there. Number numero uno. It's not number two. It's not number three. No. I'm on Factor. That's yeah. I, I think it's the best one out of yeah, all of them. They're solid. They're really good. It can help you fuel up fast with flavorful, nutritious, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You're going to save time. You're going to eat well. You're going to stay on track, reaching your goals. Listen. You might be too busy with summer plans to cook. You might also be in a situation where you have a chick that's hanging over you where she goes, yeah, well, I cook. You should do this. Well, then stop cooking. Yeah. How about that? I'm not going to have a, That's a most passive aggressive move. You let her make <laughs> food and don't eat it. Yeah. No, I already have my factory yeah, meals, so I'm actually meals. set on that. So think of something else to try to make me do what you want. <laughs> Skip the trip to the grocery store. Skip the chopping, prepping, cleaning up too. While still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need, Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in two minutes. So all you got to do is heat them up, enjoy, and then you're back outside. You're soaking up the summer weather. You're out there. Yeah, the smoothies are real good too. Oh, smoothies. Don't even get me started. Well, you know what? Get me started. Get me started. Love them. (laughs) Get me started. Looking for calorie conscious options for the summer? Try delicious, dietitian approved, calorie smart meals with around or less than 500 calories per serving. This is a healthy man's meal. Yeah. Need an extra boost to support your wellness goals this summer? Try the Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. Elevate eating at home with our new upscale Surf and Turf and the Surf and Turf meal option. Are stuff like roasted garlic, filet mignon, and shrimp, and Cajun spiced shrimp and salmon. Factor offers delicious, flavor packed options on the menu each week to fit a variety of lifestyles from keto to calorie smart, vegan, plus veggie, and protein plus, prepared by chefs and approved by dietitians. Each meal has all the ingredients you need to feel satisfied all day long while meeting your goals. And if you're looking to mix it up, you can add protein to your select vegan plus veggie meals each week. Choose from 30 34 plus chef prepared dietitian approved weekly options. We're talking broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. Plus, you can round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 45 plus add ons, including breakfast items like delicious apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites, potato, bacon and egg breakfast skillet, or an easy wellness boost. Try refreshing beverage options like cold pressed juices, shakes, and smoothies. So, I'm a big fan. This is the future of eating 
for just in general, I think, for most people. So you want to go to factormeals.com slash boyscast50. That is factormeals.com slash boyscast50. Biden, uh, he's been getting a little bit of flack because he brought the trans person <laughs> in there. <laughs> and the flag. People are not happy. The flag and the trans person. Basically, the trans person. Everybody's like, <laughs> the White House has fallen. The White House has fallen. It's like I saw photos of the White House. Like, with Joe the, Biden's uh, the one that's been falling. Yeah. <laughs> I saw photos of the White House with the pride flag or whatever, and then uh, like beside it was um, Paris with Nazi flags all over it, just like how when the Nazis took over Paris. People were like, <laughs> you know what's kind of making me laugh is like people were posting all the things of both sides being like that everyone, all the like liberals when Trump fell, being like this guy's not even fit to be president, and people being like no, it was just this, and then when Biden fell, uh, this the complete opposite. Like everyone's being like this guy's too old, he keeps falling, and other people are like it's pretty reasonable. To be living far, right? Yeah, I mean, he's <laughs> like, 80. He's... I know, but it was like, I was thinking that's that's how you know you're too deep into politics when you're just like arguing about who you're like, my guy's fall was reasonable. Yeah, 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 you're yeah, like, yeah. listen, both of these guys are too, you, both of these guys are getting a little old if they're all falling all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you can, it's like also you can admit your guy's old. I mean, yeah. like, listen, you got a bunch of 70 year olds, they're falling. It's like, a, it's almost like that's the, you just picture like a town hall and it's like Bernie Sanders, uh, fucking Trump, Joe Biden, everyone's got oxygen masks on <laughs> and they're all falling and they're just like, that fall, that, oh no, that's a fall. It's like, you guys the one falling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, everyone. You know, so Bernie's like, there were ball bearings <laughs> on the stage. Someone threw ball bearings. I didn't fall. I was thinking about doing I was a, sabotaged. I'm doing a video that the guy that keeps, the guy that's been like uh, uh, sliming up the stage before yeah. Joe Biden steps <laughs> on it. Greasing it up. Yeah, I've been the guy that's greasing it up. <laughs> but also, so when they basically, the, the, um, the photo that he posted, it was like, today, the people's house, your house, sends a clear message to the country and to the world. America is a nation of pride, right? Yeah. But it's funny, like, it reads like you're fucking coming out of the closet. Yeah, for sure. So it's like, <laughs> it very much reads like the country's like telling its dad, like, listen, I got a, something the secret to tell you. You know what I mean? Like, we've been having sex with fucking Canada. <laughs> I was like, well, nothing straight about that. It's a girl country. Sorry. I've been having sex with Brazil. <laughs> Brazil. <laughs> Brazil's been fucking railing me. <laughs> They've also, it's kind of like that. That's the joke that I said before. Like a guy that had a pride tattoo before, like Irish pride or yeah, like yeah. white pride or something. And it just turned into a gay thing. And then just like oh, before gay really popped off and it was like, oh shit, you're like a, you're like a uh, fucking gay and he's like no i'm racist like <laughs> it's almost like someone probably had a pride just said pride like before the gay stuff like it just said pride mm -hmm. and then they're like can you just throw a white in front of that please like he has to go to the <laughs> tattoo artist being like i don't know white irish i don't, I don't care it's throw like, something in front of that something or <laughs> something like pride's that. officially took over the word i will say the gays have officially took over the word pride yeah, yeah the flag, you can't say i'm a proud the, guy the anymore. flag stuff is pretty funny though too with the specifically because i'm uh, a proud american I had, loud to look, and I, I had to look it up i was like has this ever happened before where they flew the flags like that at the White House, and I don't think so. I think this is the first year ever. Is the first one? This is the first time that they've had like the the pride flag. He's been going extra. I guess the companies have toned well, down that's... a bit, but he's going extra wild. He, he was getting he's getting killed by everyone too because he was like online being like, "Please listen, these are our kids, and we need to make sure that if they're gay, that's good." And blah blah. And I was like, "They're not your kids." Yeah, yeah I know. I'm real <laughs> mad about that. But uh, this is what I didn't know, which is pretty funny, is that so it's actually today, which is uh, Wednesday, even though people are watching on Friday, but today is flag day okay it's American america flag today is, you know johnny today's flag day and then it's also national flag week <laughs> this week so it's a funny extra which funny is, day which, to which, which i found kind of interesting that it's national flag week during national flag drop Month. the owl <laughs> <laughs> there you go there we go Got that queued up. What we got there. Got that queued up. <laughs> i wasn't trying to <laughs> Yeah, he was getting. But it's like, that's, that's you ever hear this, Johnny? <laughs> yeah, you ever hear this, Johnny? <laughs> you hear about this? Well, he's the only American here. I gotta just make sure. Sometimes I go like, I'm like, is it like I just look at my my calendar? You know, it says National Flag Day or whatever, and they're like, just gotta make sure. It's Flag Day. Do people care about that? Uh, the only reason I do is because. Yeah, okay. So it's flagged it. But the trans gay <laughs> stuff, that is going to be like the reason... Imagine they did that because they were trying to mix the waters. They go, listen, for National Flag Day, the NFL will be doing a flag football. You're like, this feels like for the other pride. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>
<laughs> this feels like you're trying to do something for the other bride. Yeah, we're kind of getting confused here. The messaging is kind of getting all. No over. contact football. It's gonna be flag football for flag month, and you're like, ah, feels like you're doing this for the other month. <laughs> Also, two men, uh, if it's two men, you get in free. And you go, mm. Mm, is this a flag thing? I wonder how calculated it was. <laughs> Boys night. But I think it's a very, it is, because uh, it is complicated, right? Because they can be like, you know, it's an all, it's a boy, for, it's a bar for just boys. And you go, which month is that for? Yeah. You go, what do you mean? <laughs> just saying there's, it's a bar. Boys who serve. <laughs> served who? <laughs> Boys. Served that, or serviced? <laughs> Your boys have done service. Hmm. And you go, listen, it's a place where men can go and have fun. <laughs> and there's no pesky women around. Uh, uh, look, it's just I don't want to show up there and they're serving Bud Light. Go, we love Bud Light. What do you mean? <laughs> That's the, I was laughing about the idea of just like the, the guy, the like old guy who still has the Bud Light and he's like quitting that, like he's quitting smoking where you're just looking at it, talking to it. Like, listen, you know, I still love you, brother, but <laughs> you, I, you think I don't want to drink you, I want to put you in my mouth, but I can't do that. <laughs> I'm a Modelo man. You're too now. gay. You're too gay, okay? <laughs> now run along. Run along. <laughs> get. Yeah, get out of here. That's him talking to the Bud Light. Get, get. Don't come back. I will say, though, the most. You know, I can't resist you. <laughs> he's got to make a clean break. <laughs> <laughs> the most annoying thing about this is gonna hurt me more than it's gonna hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> smashes it, yeah, smashes or shoots a hole in it. Like, <laughs> sh- empties I, out. Go on, get. <laughs> it's really annoying though with this flag thing is because it's very clear now that this is gonna be for the next election, like the main issue probably. What do you mean? Just the the trans stuff, like, or it's going to be one of the biggest issues. Oh, for, for sure. sure. But I mean, it wasn't in the last election. It was like literally not even a talking point. And I guess we were at COVID and all that stuff. But you're like, I don't remember this ever being like an, a main issue where it's like literally like, you know, the given kids gender reassignment stuff like that is going to be like a top three like position. Essentially, That's the equivalent of back and before being like, hey, I'm the guy that's like, Pro terrorist. It's like a yeah. deal. It's a deal breaker for a lot of people. You know but what I mean? That's how they're basically splitting it up. And then, and I mean, it's also crazy that like Trump literally got fucking indicted yesterday, and it's like not that big of a news story no, just because we all care. expected it. Oh, yeah, exactly. well, it's just like everybody expected it, and they're just kind of just doing it, and we're all just like, yeah, I guess they're doing that, huh? Yeah, they really are just <laughs> that's happening for real. They're really, like, like there's these articles that come out and they go on Pride so, Month. They're like on National Flag Month week. <laughs> They're like legitimately too. They're like, yeah, Trump's facing like up maximum of like five hundred and thirty-eight years in jail. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know and that. you're like, I, but you're like, so there's to a point where you go, like, if, if they legitimately go, yeah, we're we're sending him to jail. He's going to jail for the rest of his life, and everybody's gonna be like, huh? <laughs> I know. It, re- it really is like that, huh? That's what you're gonna do us <laughs> like that. <laughs> just they're just really just so out in the open, being like, yep, yeah, just. If anybody was unclear how things yeah, work, they go like, we're <laughs> sending the previous president to jail for the rest of his life. I know. I listened to most of that Andrew Date thing. He was saying a lot about that. To, he yeah, said yeah, that yeah. the Matrix has taken Trump down yeah, too. Actually, I, I stand corrected on that because I, I said uh, on our live stream. We said uh, we were going to listen to it. I said I wasn't going to listen to it. I said I was like, I don't have You're too but, cool but, for that. Well, I just thought, and then I started listening to it. Go, he nah, gets you hyped up, dude. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't deny that he gets you fired I, up. I liked all his jail takes too, like talking about all the stuff, like what was like in jail and all that I stuff. I thought I had a couple that I thought this is the funny. I'll say the funny parts and I'll say the good parts. And then you can do uh, this, the funny part was I think that he's just one of those guys where it's like everything he did was like the perfect move. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's even like I was a window salesman. He's like everyone should be a window salesman. <laughs> just like no matter what he did, it was like necessary for anyone yeah, yeah, to be yeah. great. Or the but like uh, then the other part, he was like he's basically trying to give his brother a compliment, and he was like honestly, I'm so, that's I just want to shout out to my brother. I'm so happy that he was there in jail because I'm so high stress and I was trying to figure everything out every second, and he's very stoic and he calmed me. And but like and he was but like well. While he was saying that, he kept 
fifty thousand times. He's like, obviously, he's allowed to be stoic because I take care of everything, so he can just <laughs> sort of chill. Yeah. And he was like, but honestly, I needed that energy of someone who's just chilling. Again, wouldn't be able to chill if it wasn't for me taking, you know, taking <laughs> action, solving every problem. So he knows everything's gonna be okay because I'm there. He can just chill out and know that nothing bad's gonna happen to him. And having someone around <laughs> that just no knows nothing, like, like having someone who's so dependent <laughs> on you and would be destitute without you is just there's something about that that's just reassuring. He, he was very serious about the fact that like he needed this guy around him who is just very chill and doesn't care about everything but the reason he's very chill and doesn't care about everything is because I'm perfect yeah <laughs> that, was, that, that one I was like in he said he got a couple that were just like good where he goes I don't take Advil he's like Advil's for pussies <laughs> because he's like he's like what you can't deal with the pain that God gave you <laughs> you have to take Advil <laughs> So he's against Advil, and then he said he wouldn't lie for $10 million, even if no one would know. Yeah. Even a small one. Even God. Like yeah, if someone's he like, if that, God would know. If someone's like, is that girl hot or whatever, and then you can get $10 million for lying, he wouldn't lie. He wouldn't lie. Well, I guess so those are the parts. There's a lot of stuff like that that was making me laugh. He's just like so extreme, but it's funny. And then a couple of the good ones he said, where he goes, uh, there's a, uh, he goes, when you're in a, he's like, I'll do, the, probably the most important one was he was like, because a lot of people you see even like you know when like daily wires arguing and all these like wars he was more of the take that like the people like you're like oh we got bud lights share price down he was like the people pushing this shit don't give a fuck and they don't give a fuck if america like falters because they'll have their money in so many diversified places he was like at the top top he was like oh there is no like oh we were like uh doing something to piss them off it's like they don't even notice yeah yeah, I thought that's kind of there is yeah, some yeah. truth to that. Yeah, for sure. He's like the people at the super top where he's like they don't even live in America. Yeah, there's a certain level of wealth where they're just so like you're this is just like rodents fighting to them, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um the other one was uh, he said that like, he was like probably a good way of explaining he was like tolerance uh it's like just means you have no standards it was like if you're tolerant of it was like basically if you're like if you're tolerant it was like oh if you know standards i'm tolerant of everything it's like yes you have no standards yeah yeah which is true i mean they have it's, they, they tug at you from like an emotional thing with all the tolerance stuff or whatever and then you're like but yeah it kind of does come down to that yeah and then he said most people don't have opinions he was like which i sort of agree with because he's always like oh half the people think this half the people think this and you're like no have, most people like don't think anything they just think whatever fucking they're programmed or whatever told to think yeah which i think is true yeah that's true and then the last one he was like when you have a world that has no morals the only logical move is to act with no morals and that's kind of like a true a lot of times yeah oh, that's interesting. yeah i thought it was pretty good it was uh patrick <laughs> david's funny yeah patrick david i like him <laughs> And it was, it was literally like a Christian dude, a Muslim dude, a Jewish dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, yeah it was good. I thought it was pretty solid. <laughs> he gets you. He and gets you and, and tastes sure. literally like, they're going to kill me. That's his like takeaway. He goes like, um, they're going to kill me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, nothing. And he's like, and he's like, why? Because they're like, why don't you just like go chill and just. And he's like, yeah, they're just. They're, oh, he's in too deep right yeah, now. He's like, I'm in too deep. He's like, I what do you can't. mean? I'm gonna go chill. He's like on trial for the rest of his no, life. No, he's saying like, even if he get got away, they're like, are you gonna be still like this provocateur? And he's just like, no, like I'm, I'm, I'm still gonna be that. I'm not gonna like just not like some people. Down. Some people would be like, would be you know spooked by that and be like, okay, you know what? Message, message received. Right. I'll I'll go live on my like yacht or whatever with all my money and just like that's that. And he's just like, no, not doing that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You're right because even if he's doing this interview, but that's not maybe the point of doing these interviews is like so much of the trial is like public fucking will or whatever you know what i mean does he still have hustlers university is that still cooking? i'm sure it's still cooking. yeah it must be i mean i wouldn't know but <laughs> <laughs> it's not like i'm working towards not my like yeah it's <laughs> not like i'm currently working towards my master's degree don't look master's. at my bank statement but i wouldn't know <laughs> so then speaking of a hustler <clears throat> This is probably the funniest article we've had in a long time. So there's this guy, right? And he runs this course. It's a $55 semen release ritual where bros platonically come together. And then, the so this guy's kind of been popping off. Like, he's got a big Instagram page. He was like, I think Channel 5 did like a thing with him. And like, so he's kind of been out there here and there. Yeah. But he's really sort of catching steam. And he does have people that like sign up for his course and everything like that, right? So basically... All these guys get together and it's got some like semen retention stuff, but then the guys like jack off together and they sunbathe their fucking assholes nude and shit like and that. And they touch their dicks and stuff and like they touch their dicks and the whole thing he keeps reiterating that it's nothing gay about it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do a we'll do a little rundown of this guy's course and see if we think it's gay or not gay. 
So this is this is the Instagram post that he's post like pitching it. He goes, "There's a type of connection that men can share, uh, both intimate and non-sexual. A connection that is deeply nourishing, inspiring, invigorating." So he's got like a. And it's called platonic male erotic bonding. Most would say this is a form of homosexuality or bisexuality, but not him. The world needs more men who can transcend the labels of the Matrix. So he's kind of yeah, he's, he's in tapping the into. Too. He's sort of tapping. But he's in, like a different Matrix. <laughs> all of his stuff is like the Matrix doesn't want us to touch dicks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Andrew Tate's like, no, 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 that's not the the Matrix yeah. is definitely. Yeah, this guy's sort of like yeah, nothing honestly, to do with that. Yeah, the Matrix is like the Matrix is trying to take you down. The Matrix is coming for your kids, and the Matrix doesn't want <laughs> me and Tom to touch our dicks together. <laughs> And then jack each other off. We go, what? In a totally not gay platonic way. And everybody's like, what? Yeah. Lost me at that last part. And he goes, it's the Matrix attack. Listen, I just go, oh, look, we got an agent of the Matrix here who doesn't want to touch his dick to me. <laughs> Dude, I don't think I want to fucking touch our erect penises together. You go, <clears throat> someone took the blue pill. Uh, the Matrix got to you. Oh, fucking Morpheus got to you, huh? <laughs> The world needs integrated masculine energy. So he's really selling it as like this is pro masculine. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're if you don't like, you almost have to because otherwise you're like, what the hell are we even? What's the market here? Because like gay guys are probably like, yeah, we do a lot of this. Stuff. The market's gay guys. It has to be. You think you're a straight guy doing this course? No. It can't be. Uh, yeah, a lot of probably like you can't have buy buy. Th yeah, there's like thirty dudes. You're not like this guy keeps saying he's not gay, but like. What straight dudes signing up for the like fucking two dudes jacking each other off for the for the brotherhood? Yeah, I mean, I guess if like you you get your testosterone levels checked the next day and they're like spiked through the roof and you go see, <laughs> it worked, but it was only because this, 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 this straight dude jacked you off. If a gay dude jacks you off, that's true. The, you don't get the test the levels drop. He goes, uh, so tw he, this guy, he did a session. They went to the session. Twenty two guys showed up to the session. Not a bad turnout. That's only one. Yeah, that's I'm telling you. This guy's doing okay with his dude jack. Well, again, there is a market for dudes that want to. Okay, imagine you were in the closet and you could tell your wife, mm, let me just Where are you going? A, a, a manliness seminar? Yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, as, as long as she doesn't walk in while you're on the Zoom call with your legs behind your head. <laughs> they should do a seminar. What was the manliness thing, though? The festival in Orlando? Yeah. What was that called? Like the the right wing festival? Man Fest. Man Fest. Whatever start. it was. They should have like this. Like if it was like a mix up. This guy has one little This guy's doing like one. Yeah. This guy's one little booth where you suntan your ass. <laughs> So this, remember, it involves a lot of deep breathing, moaning, and a lot of dick swinging. So a big part of it is they swing their dicks yeah, around. Yeah, just have a lot of helicopter. <laughs> well, yeah, I can see the, the, how he sort of tricks some guys into it, where he's like, listen, just a couple bros some doing some man shit. Who, who, swinging the dicks. He's like, now you do mine. Oh, like, you just sort of keep him <laughs> before the guy knows it. Like, wait a second, why is there a dick in my mouth? <laughs> what, what, hold on. Whoa, are we bros or are we not bros, huh? What's going on here? Wait, wait, wait one gosh tootin' darn second. <laughs> Holy, helicoptering the D's like a huge You know what part we need actually it. is because uh, this is in Vancouver. We need one of the Vancouver fellas to go uh, drop the 55. None of the fucking boys want to go do this. We, we Be need, a fucking dog. No, and we, go need one check of the gay, we need one of the gay bros. That's to go. fine too. Yeah. Just go find out what's going on. Yeah, well, Vice already did this, and it was like, it is funny, because Vice, basically, the guy did, like, the, how did they used to did, like, I, I, drank, I did ayahuasca in the desert. Yeah. Now it's like, went to a straight male bathhouse. <laughs> it's like, imagine your boss gave you this assignment. Oh. <laughs> you go, You're like, I'd rather go get beat up by Andrew Tate in Romania. Well, obviously, this guy was like, oh, no. I mean, a three, <laughs> it's a, the South Park fucking, the, the, the cop that's doing the investigative like prostitutes by busting them after he blows them. Jesus this guy's God. like, after doing four years worth of sessions, it's time to write my article. <laughs> A chorus of men are grunting and growling loudly <clears throat> through the tiny recording of a Zoom. So the fact that it's Zoom is like this guy, that's a real fucking scam. There's a artist. bunch of dudes on Zoom jacking off to each other. On their floors. On their floors. But they're all on a single Zoom. That's something you don't want the chick walking in on, huh? No. I, I would say that's probably the most thing that you, the most embarrassing thing you could walk in on was your, your dude, and then you look at the TV, and then it's just 12 other guys also on the ground swinging their dicks around. <laughs> What are you doing? I don't know how you get, and you go, babe. Oh, I, I, how many times you? Can I, how many times can I tell you about the Matrix? 
<laughs> okay, look, if I don't do this, the Matrix is attacking us. So just choose whatever you want. So but. you're on the ground spanking it. There's 19 other, 21 other guys on the thing spanking, and your chick walks home, just drops the groceries, like, what the hell? And you go, you don't understand it. There's a blue pill, <laughs> and there's a red pill. She's like, what? You go, what don't you get? It's pretty simple stuff. I'm watching the recorded session, The Alchemy of the Divine Masculine, a seed release ritual for... <laughs> Sexual transformation. One hour and so it's a one hour and twenty minute jerk off session hosted by the Manhood Academy. Nice. So it's a legitimately he's basically doing like a fucking jail. This, so this is essentially yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so this is a left wing manhood academy, essentially. Like this is like this is what <laughs> right. this right because there's like a right wing. You're man good. School. You're so right. Man right wing man school is like you know like a, a like a boxing course on how to beat your wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like tying knots and stuff and like sh like sharpening your knives and. Stuff. It's like how to you know uh, like how to properly dish out punishments if she doesn't have dinner. Yeah, already. <laughs> like all that stuff. And then this is left wing manosphere. <laughs> right. This is the left wing manosphere. Where it's literally like get some sun on your asshole and jerk off a bunch of dudes. <laughs> J O I. These guys like slower, not yet. You haven't earned it. <laughs> you haven't earned it. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> You're right. They are grunting like this that. is the this is Trudeau's manosphere. <laughs> it costs fifty five dollars and promises to teach techniques for harnessing sexual energy, exploring sexual desires and fantasies. Well, it sounds like you're already sort of exploring the fantasies. Because so any dude whose fantasy is like, what's your What's your sexual fantasy? I'm thinking threesome with two chicks. All right, well, I know a place you can explore that. <laughs> oh, I'm on the ground with 19 dudes. You want to have the threesome or not, pal? Do you want to have the threesome? <laughs> exactly. So you got a guy fucking giving you a J-O-I, basically. He's a holistic embodiment coach. According to the website, he frequently, frequently appears in Bl Blunderfield's videos as a session partner. So he's sort of, he's the main guy and he comes in to sort of, you know, soup up the JOI. Yeah. But he's got a lot of other like JOI cam guys working for him. <laughs> well, he's literally left wing Andrew Tate. He's just got all these dudes working the cams. Instead of Romania, it's <laughs> Victoria. No, it's one of those things where it's kind of like, you know, same with Bill Gates with his mosquito factory. You're like, I'm not a villain. This guy's like, I'm not gay. It's like at some point when you're sitting in a building with nine guys doing jerk off instructions to men. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the moment where you have to demonstrate on them yeah. for them to understand, you go, look, let me just do this for you. And they go, okay, this is getting it, It's getting a, a little yeah. bit of a iced tea. I got news for you. You gay. Yeah, gay. But it's, he says it's a platonic manliness experiment. Um, and then they go, he's a, this, so this guy, the main guy that's working for him, is a sex kung fu coach. He's a music, of course, he's a musician. Of course. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a podcast host. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what were the odds that he wasn't, does, does, this guy doesn't play the guitar, do you think? I feel like he plays solo bass, to be honest. <laughs> solo acoustic bass. For, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, solo acoustic bass. With, with like uh, tambourine like wristbands. <laughs> for, you know, so it's like he got a little tambourine wristband action. So he's a sex kung fu coach, which... <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> In a dude's ass. <laughs> he studied theater in New York. So uh, you're, Okay, so right now this guy is like kung fu musician that studied theater in New York at the American Musical and Dramatic Academy, but switched career paths to music and yoga, and he's released a bunch of albums. So I tell you what. You go, I want a manliness coach. You go, okay. I know the most manly guy. Well, it's like, oh, he's, only, he's at seven because right now he's a... Uh, He's 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 finishing his stint on Broadway, you know, doing the <laughs> <laughs> what's a famous Broadway play? That's more up your alley. Andy, get your gun. <laughs> no, no, something mm. gayer. Phantom. Yeah, he he's playing Phantom, sort of manly. If I'm being completely honest, mm. I've never seen a lot, seen a lot of Broadway plays. Actually, never seen one. Okay, what's what are the main Broadway plays? We're gonna go to Les Mis. Yes. Okay. Thank you. There you go. He's one of the chorus girls in Les Mis right now. <laughs> He wishes. <laughs> he wishes. He wishes. So this guy's one of the chorus girls in Les Miserables. Yeah. 
He basically, okay, you know people that are in musicals, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the theater, most of the comedians that we know right now, the guys that are in musicals, is it Stifler, basically? No. They're trying to maybe say it's the guy from uh, American Pie, Oz. Yeah, Oz, but yeah, no. Generally, he's just there for the, generally he's just there for the tang. <laughs> We all know that. Right. So this guy, it's one thing if he was like, hey, I'm this like UFC guy and then I was this and then I figured out this like manliness thing. I still would call it gay. But on top of that, this guy's like, you know, I basically have a manliness seminar where a bunch of guys jack each other off and you go, what's your background before that? I was in fucking musical theater for the last eight years. <laughs> and I'm a yogi. <laughs> yeah, and I'm a yogi. And part-time musician. I'm not buying it, pal. The only thing, I guess, kung fu is a little bit manly. Yeah, except I guarantee you he doesn't do any of that. He doesn't do much kung he's, fu. He's, yeah. I think he's a figurative. I don't like think he does go, a lot of kung fu. You're like, so you're like hitting people and stuff? He goes, oh, God, no. I would never hit oh, him. Oh, my God, no. Goes, oh, God, no, no, no. We don't, tre we don't teach Welcome that. Welcome to the Manliness Seminar. You think this part's gay? Uh, it says, in one video, he records himself pissing into a mason jar after a really <laughs> juicy anus workshop and drinks it after touting the benefits of pre-cum bracket there are some nutrients in semen if you're wondering that's just vice editorializing and then mixing it with the pee is that <laughs> that's the one sentence where your wife's reading the thing and you go okay well <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah I sure in the framework <laughs> that the matrix has set up for you your whole life that that seems gay to you i get it <laughs> it seems like you're picking and choosing because yeah, you're, you're completely brainwashed, you're like... completely ignoring the kung fu part <laughs> and you're really honing in on the drinking my own piss and cum part <laughs> he goes he's like what's gay about drinking your own piss is it and weird cum. sure and cum sure but it's a pre-cum it's like a drop or whatever <laughs> is it weird sure and then she's like i was actually more what was the really juicy anus workshop part <laughs> babe i feel like you are really you're picking and choosing what you're listening to here <laughs> Yes, it was an anus. You're workshop. lying by omission because you're not mentioning any of the manliness <laughs> benefits that I'm getting. Kung fu. <laughs> I'm way more flexible now. I'm flexible, which is my, manly. My feet behind my ears. It's definitely a next level red pill, dude, with his juicy <laughs> anus workshop. <laughs> Um, I'll tell you what, at the very least, if you're not gay, the guys that are signing up for your cum drinking workshop are definitely gay. Yeah. So if you're just like, even if this guy's trying to say like, no, I'm actually not gay. It's like, okay, whatever 22 guys you got drinking your cum, I got news for you, pal. Yeah, yeah, if they got, if, you, if they're drinking their own, but like, I mean, I feel like it is pretty manly to just fucking rock a piss and then just put it back, you know? He, he mentions a lot of times that it's not gay, right? So that basically they do the zoom call and then he edges them and then they all bust together. <laughs> and then he goes the, so the guy that did yeah the that's bike, pretty gay he goes a few disclaimers about the activity and the participants uh he get he goes Blumenfield and Carew remind the viewers that it's not about your sexual orientation and gay panic is frequently referenced. At the end of the session they'll be guided through a release but there's no pressure for a specific outcome. How you decide to show up is totally fine. And then what the guy uh, he, 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 the guy from Vice said, in this specific case, every guy did get their release. <laughs> so they all have busted. And there's a constant reminder that it's not gay. And then while you're doing it, if you if you are like, okay, I know you so said he's this just like verbally talking you through this. Like there's no like, all right, everybody, put your favorite porn on. Like you just you're just looking at eighteen dudes. Looking at off. eighteen dudes naked. Listen to this guy's joi, and then getting reminded that if you do feel like this is a bit gay, that's because you have gay panic. That's gay. You're gay if you think it's gay. All right. Yeah, Vice Dude. Vice Dude's. So Vice Dude said he went to the investigative session and he's. He said the first session, uh, everyone busted. He said by the seventieth session that he. <laughs> 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 after <ret> <laughs> well, and then I realized after the 70th session I realized they're probably all about the same yeah, <laughs> I had a big enough sample size yeah the only way this is going to be cool is if like y you go do this so many times that then you can just like mentally make someone else like another dude come you can just like look at them and just be like mm, and then they come and you go alright <laughs> you go what are you doing <laughs> nothing <laughs> Oh, what the <laughs> what are you, hell? <laughs> what are you doing to me? Oh, yeah. yeah. Not so funny now, huh? <laughs> Not so gay now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What is this? Stop it. Call me gay again. It's going to be a <laughs> regular thing, all right? So watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Now who's gay? Yeah. You're the guy with fucking cum all over you. <laughs> the guy just like licks it. You go. 
<laughs> See you later. Good day. <laughs> See you later, gay boy. <laughs> gay panic. Repeat after me. So they have a mantra that they do while they're doing their JOI session. He goes, repeat after me. I am fearless. I am shameless. I am doubtless. The penis is a pillar of light. <laughs> it's got really, they're worshiping the penises. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at some point where you're saying the penis is a pillar of light and you got nine naked erect dudes in front of you and you're worshipping their dongs it's funny because I know this exact type of guy too like no you fucking yeah you do I do these super hippies <laughs> he, uh, definitely fucking knows Danny nine <laughs> owes Danny nine sessions <laughs> Well, the 10th one's free. Uh, I know this guy exactly. I'll tell you the one thing, the first thing you know about him. He says that if you refer other guys, you get a 5% code. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll use my affiliate link, everybody. <laughs> I'll tell you what. This guy has affiliate links. Don't fall for it. It's a bit of a scam. Because <laughs> they said, too, he's like a bit of like a chemtrail This guy. is Buster's University. Yeah, That's yeah, what this yeah. Is. yeah Buster's. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is like super hippie dude, like... <laughs> Literal like chemtrail guy, like I don't think he's into chemtrail. No, he is. It says in the article he's oh, okay. he's a chemtrail guy. He's like these super far out. I guess he took so much acid that his fucking. Brain That's what I'm got, saying. His wires there, got there crossed. These like crazy like hippie like wook kind of dudes who like probably lives in like one of like the islands off of like Vancouver or whatever. Like in I got a question for you. Name. Do you think that if you were ever boning a dude, you would say that like fucking the mantra? You go, I'm fearless, I'm shameless, <laughs> I'm doubtless. As, as you're boning, I a dude. wouldn't even get the that. Doesn't the, okay. I, I, picture I, it the other way. Faster. You want to talk about in denial? Yeah. Does it? If, okay, if a guy was banging his chick and he's like, I am fearless, I am doubtless. Like that seems like a like, guy. Can you stop saying that? But doesn't that seem like a guy that was in denial about his sexuality? Yeah, that's would like say, a, right? that's like gay conversion. If you were having sex with a girl, yeah, you'd go, I am doubtless. I have zero doubts that, about that, this. That is your first week back from gay <laughs> conversion therapy when you get to see your like new girlfriend. I do not have a single doubt about this session it's, that is happening. Uh, it's like you're the, the vagina is the pillar of light. You love it. <laughs> I love vagina. Remember that guy? He goes, I love women. Yeah, women, 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 women. women. I'm not gay no more. <laughs> yeah, guys, the king. I love the Lord and I'm not. Gay no more. <laughs> that guy's the king. That's I am fearless. Right. Well, why would you need to be fearless? <laughs> I am fearless. I'm not afraid. I have zero doubts. This is what God intended for me. It's so it's conversion camp. It's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. I do not have gay panic. <laughs> Moving along, warming up the dragon pearls. That's what they call them, I guess. They start rolling their ball sacks between their fingers and they ask the audience to repeat, I have beautiful balls. <laughs> <laughs> I have beautiful balls. My balls are louder. Beautiful. I have beautiful balls. Louder. I have. I have beautiful balls. He starts crying. <laughs> they're beautiful. They're so beautiful. Well, no one. First of all, no one has beautiful balls. No, they're horrible looking. They're so, also oh, so beautiful. We're gonna milk the juice. <laughs> Once again, I want I remind our viewers to not have any gay panic, but uh, just wanted you guys to remind them a lot about the gay panic. He goes, "Listen, some of your gay panic might uh, clock in, but right now we're about to milk the juiciness of our nuts into our systems before we shoot later on." He calls it shooting like MacGruber. Ugh. Come on, guys, who's ready to shoot? All right, we're gonna shoot. Do you think they, they shoot it? They bait. He sort of sees him as like you know, like an Arab guy at a wedding. Yeah. That's how he sort of sees him when he's <laughs> shooting. <laughs> I mean, again, I the fact that he just literally just pisses in a jar and then just puts it back. Is... I, even if a straight guy was just going to spank into like normal porn, he goes, "Fucking, I'm just going to go back to the place, milk the juiciness of my nuts." You go, "All right, that's <laughs> stop." Yeah, that sounds saying that to gross. anyone. Hey, babe, you want to <laughs> fucking? <laughs> I'm gonna call you the milk woman because you're fucking <laughs> milking the juiciness. Ugh. The instruction, the ins they instruct participants to grab lube or oil and start stroking. The few metaphors going, uh, blah blah blah. Uh, they said uh, the host. Now they have a few metaphors about taking it to a mechanic. <laughs> There's nothing gay with this. Basically, <laughs> this is going. To it's the exact same thing as being at the mechanic to get your car tuned up. <laughs> If the mechanic wanted you to be nude and then fucking jack you yeah, off. Yeah, you know, if the mechanic just wants you to play with your cock while he's fixing your <laughs> brakes. We're just 22 guys that are doing something exactly the same as going to the mechanic. He's got his <laughs> wrench and you got Todd's <laughs> wrench. If the mechanic asked you to grab his wrench, would that be gay? Well, then this is no different, all right? Now start milking, boys. 
people are doing what I can only assume is gnashing teeth or rotting sounds. It sounds oh, so they, they've got them doing like fucking. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is yeah. This is because they're so, <laughs> so manly. So they go, what noises do men make? And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bu- yeah, it's a bunch of gay dudes trying to Wilson. <laughs> yeah, what, what what would a man sound like in this situation? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What does a man sound like? Yeah. Man. Yeah. Just a couple men. Post nut. <laughs> He encourages participants to find their center again. I find one powerful way to keep gay panic at bay is to remind yourself that you're an animal. So feel your antlers, feel your hairiness, feel your roots. So basically after they just jacked off with a bunch of guys, some of the guys might have a little bit of second thoughts. (laughs) He has to give them a bit of a reminder. (laughs) He's got to settle them back down to remember, like feel your chest. Nothing gay about a hairy chest. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Boy, I mean, I might feel a little gay when you're kind of picking another dude's cum out of it after it's dried, <laughs> but that is incidental. He goes, that is just happens when we're just doing what we do, but it's not gay. We're a couple dudes that did what we did for a straight way. People are doing what I can assume is mashing teeth, and then take your dick and balls and growl. So then they finish after he tells them, then like, reminds him once again that nothing was gay about it. They finish by growling and doing a helicopter. Yeah. And then they're sort of swinging. Yeah, you know, that would probably be even weirder than the legs behind your head. Just like walking on a dude that's like fucking growling into a Zoom meeting, and you go, it's like it's, you're just pulling like the ultimate Jeffrey Tubin. And he goes, he goes, your Zoom's on. He goes, I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I paid for this. This guy's really out there, by the way. Too. I, he has a post. love him. He has a post where he says, "You cannot transmit herpes. That's just an illusion." <laughs> That's like a guy getting like popped by his girl. She's like, how the fuck do I have herpes? And he goes, I don't know. You can't even transmit herpes. That's the universe. Yeah, he goes, I don't know. You can't transmit herpes. So. <laughs> oh, that's a good shit. Yeah, yeah. I guess you just got to probably like GMOs. Condoms of the Matrix, no, too. Yeah, this guy's like, Have it. you been not or shopping organic? Because it might be that. <laughs> so they ended off with a straight helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Heading over to Straightville. <laughs> Last stop, Straight Island. <laughs> Can you do a helicopter? Don Winslow? Yeah. <laughs> what does it sound like? <laughs> I don't know. No? I, can't do, I can't do it. I thought you were. Michael Winslow? You think I could do a helicopter? No. You know what? The thing is, is that there's. Uh, I, because this guy's also like an anti-vaxxer too. Like he's a big like anti. Like this guy has. He's a lot of. He's different all things. over the map. But you're like, you seem like probably getting a lot of weird straight dudes showing up to this who are like really confused. I don't know, dude. I've, I'd be surprised. I think that some of the straight dudes might show up to the manliness seminar, but like probably <laughs> halfway. I'm here for the manliness. Sem- what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Fellas. We got to tell you again about Fume. I've been telling you. I'm going to keep telling you. Cold turkey might be great for sandwiches, but listen, there's a better way to break your bad habits, okay? And that way is Fume. Two dots on the U. Interesting name. You know we're talking about Fume. It's pronounced Fume for the record. And they look at the problem a different way. Not everything that's a bad habit's wrong. You know, for example, working out, not a bad habit. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habits? Fume's an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all-natural, delicious flavors. You guys get it. You know what we're talking about here. If you need to quit something, which we're not going to say exactly what that something is, but y'all know what we're talking about. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habits easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking the habit. I wasn't sure what to expect. But I personally, I use the fidgeting if I'm editing and I'm and I'm rocking the fume. And as you know, you probably heard other people in the New York comedy scene talking about fumes. So it's it's got it's caught on quite. Yeah, the, it's popping off. Yeah, y'all at the comedy clubs, I see everyone with their fumes. You know, so it has definitely turned into quite a thing. And people have replaced other habits which are not as good. So it's got a good taste. It feels cool. 
It looks very cool. And stopping is something we all put off because it's hard. But switching to Fume is actually easy, enjoyable, and fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. And there's no reason that one of those cannot be yours truly. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use the code BOYSCAST. Support the show and you receive 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's T-R-Y-F-U-M dot com. Use the promo code BOYSCAST to save an additional 10% off your order today. And next, we got to tell you about Babbel, the language learning app that makes it easy. If you got an upcoming summer trip, you know, the travel hack is Babbel. Whether you're a seasoned traveler embarking on your first adventure, communication's key to fully experiencing a new culture. That's where Babbel comes in. It's a language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language learning lessons. You're not going to want to put it down. And there's still time to learn a new language before you reach your destination. Now, Danny has been bragging about the Babbel. Yeah, it's a really cool app. I've been using it. I've actually been using it uh, to learn Russian. Because, oh! Yeah, yeah, I've been trying to, I'm trying to bone up on my Russian because it's my grandmother's 99th birthday uh, in the summer, and she doesn't really speak English very well. Interesting. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So, but, but the app's really cool. Like, I actually have it set where you can just do little, because it's like, sometimes it feels like you got to do this huge commitment where it's like, you know, I got to do like an hour a day, and that's a bummer. But you can do literally five minutes a day. They break it up in these like little five-minute lessons. You learn like a couple things here and there and then you just kind of do it whatever like daily every day and then uh yeah it's pretty cool they have like games and stuff built into it it's a pretty slick app uh, and that's the only reason danny's learning russian yes you only need 10 minutes <laughs> to complete a lesson so you can start having real life conversations in as little as three weeks Babbel's expertly crafted lessons are built around real life you learn how to have practical conversations about travel relationships business and more other language learning apps use ai for their lesson plans but Babbel's lessons were created by over 100 50 language learning experts and voiced by real native speakers. With Babbel, you can choose between 14 different languages, plus Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and your accent. So, there's many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, you can get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash boyscast. That is babbel.com slash boyscast for up to 55% off your subscription. Now we're talking Babbel language for life. Hey, I got to show you something here. Okay. Um, so do you know how I did the video? Because people say I look like Bam Margera and I did the Bam Margera video. Yeah. I, we haven't done one of these in a while, but I, well, I guess I haven't got one that's so good, but a comment. Yeah. <clears throat> so the part, there was a, basically the video was I said I was Bam Margera's brother and no one cares for me, right? And then mm -hmm. there's a part <clears throat> where my pranks were essentially like living under a bridge, shaving under the thing if people haven't watched it. And then there's one part where I'm like so bad at pranking where I go do this prank. I go, I'll just show you, I'll just show you the little section. I'm Dan Margera and this is a time prank. Excuse me, do you have the time? Uh, what, what I was just kidding, you're on a prank show. Huh? You're on a prank show, Dan Margera. Okay. We didn't actually need to know the time it was a prank. Okay, I'm not quite sure what the point of it is, but that's all right. I would be saying that too if I just got pranked, but... Okay. Um, do you want to walk me through how you felt when the prank was happening? I didn't think anything about it. You wanted the time, I was happy to give it to you. One of the things you'd be nice in the world is to see if people were friendly and more cordial to each other. I wasn't trying to punk you that, no, like no, that. No, 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 I, I wasn't. I'm not even the least. If it like ruined your day that you got pranked no, so hard? No, no, no. Okay. No, I, no I'm very, I was very happy to give it to you. If it's a prank, that's okay too. Yeah, you got pranked, yeah. <laughs> you got the gist of it, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is the comment that the guy goes. You have no idea what a prank is, obviously. Asking the time isn't a prank. <laughs> so this guy was, he's, he's not happy, right? And then like all the comments were like, yeah, dude, that was the point. Like it was like the point was it was a bad prank. That's the joke. And then this guy goes, yeah, we obviously have a different definition of what a joke is. Asking the time <laughs> than saying it's a prank isn't a prank or even a joke. Jokes are funny. No one has ever laughed because someone asked what time it is. <laughs> How was this a joke? No, serious question. Oh, this guy's, this guy's taking <laughs> this out on him? his family too. <laughs>
<laughs> this guy. Here, okay. Is that true, though? Okay, I'm, I'll, I'll put the photo of the Is guy. That true, uh, maybe, okay, I won't oh. put the photo of the guy up because, uh, but basically, he looks like a hippie and he's got long hair. But I, I guess. Oh, it looks like, I thought it was like a Trudeau. I guess that's of. sort of like doxing if he put his photo up. But like, yeah, yeah, don't the, um, so here's the best part of the guy. Let me see it, though. There's this. He has and he has long like gray Trudeau. hair, uh, and he runs a rage room. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this. So guy. he's like literally has like real anger problems. <laughs> so he, he runs a rage room, and he's on my time for acting and fucking <laughs> to, to put, put him on the edge. Probably give him an idea. <laughs> I think though, I think that probably he he, can't, he had to cancel the six o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever's in there, they got there and they go, "Hey, we're booked for six o'clock," and they go, "I'm sorry, we're gonna have to cancel." No, he's, he's, there. He, ah! he's sitting at his desk and he's like. Shelly, clear my schedule. Yeah. And then he just destroys his own office. Smashing clocks, right? And then, uh, so then another couple people were like, buddy, no one's saying asking the time is funny. It's supposed to, it's not supposed to be. That's the, whatever. Like, yeah, I, yeah. two or three people are trying, like, getting into it with trying this to guy, right? Reason with him. Okay. Then this is what he says to that one. He goes, he goes, and then he, he tags the guy and he goes, what time is it in Paris? <laughs> wow, I haven't laughed so hard in a long time. I'm surprised no comedians have ever stolen that joke and put it into their stand-up. This joke is absolutely hilarious. I'm so glad that you explained it to Just me. Just send him a I'm totally says. convinced that it was funny now. <laughs> and everyone's like, buddy, are you fucking mental? Dude, you just send him a cease and desist. You go, that's my joke you just used. It's copyrighted. <laughs> hey, I noticed you used yeah, my time. I don't want to, yeah, yeah, like, and now you, you're going to own the rage room because you know, I'm going to fucking take your rage room from you, pal. <laughs> hey, buddy, I noticed you just used my yeah, I noticed you joke. stole my joke, man. Like, what the fuck? He would fucking <laughs> blow his lid. You could probably call the rage room, too. Like, you probably call it, like, you could find, it's, I imagine that's his name. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Imagine. Dude, we, should we, call go to the, we go to this guy's rage room and then uh, we do a time break on him. Yeah. We, <laughs> we go, hey, pal. <laughs> We go, hey, I got a book for six o'clock, and he goes, it's five four, and I go, what time is it now? And he goes, five forty. I go, dude, gotcha. We, we should literally <laughs> I imagine that, and then I walk out. I mean, we, we should five different people going to the range room asking the time. <laughs> Can we just call him right now. I, I guess we could. <laughs> And well, he might not be the operator, but you go, hey, what time is it? And you go, gotcha. You think that, hang up. Well, I mean, I'll <laughs> guess that a rage room isn't like he doesn't have ninety employees. <laughs> Like if we don't get Our, his his rage room is probably just like his garage with a few fucking That's clocks. Fine. <laughs> My guess would be it's a few clocks because there's nothing funny about the time with this guy. Maybe so on, that's a bet. Maybe on the Patreon. That's call. the first one, and then there was another comment that was making me laugh because basically in the thing, my joke was that I was homeless and I was digging around in trash. And then he goes, "You're a grown ass man asking people to feel sorry for you. At least, uh, why don't you go get a job or at least quit digging in the garbage? <laughs> <laughs> if you put that much energy you do digging in the garbage to getting a job." Then, uh, hold on. If you put that much energy into getting a job, then you do digging in the garbage and asking people for money, then maybe you'd be okay. <laughs> so, this guy is like, <laughs> my problem is doing too much digging. This guy in the needs garbage. to get high on his own supply. This guy's like, this guy is honestly like following the 10 crack commandments, but it's <laughs> not helping him. He needs to get high on his own supply of, of rage room. Where's the rage room located? Do we not state? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to start fucking putting his info out there like okay. that. But this guy rules. We should call him in the Patreon show. <laughs> ha! <laughs> the best is just being like, yeah, the joke was that like it wasn't a joke. That was the joke. And he goes, yeah, thanks. I know what a joke is. <laughs> <laughs> and asking the time isn't one of them. This guy's fucking brains broken, dude. <laughs> Dude, you could legitimately, if you called him every day from a different number, asking, asking the time, time, like you could have him institutionalized. He'd be a, he'd weeks. be in the institution within four days. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, <laughs> like no problem. Just, Why does everyone think? Asking Why the does everybody keep asking me the time? <laughs> it's rage o'clock. <laughs> this guy does not like being asked the time. <laughs> so okay, one last thing is the fucking nurses, or no, sorry, the nurses, the witches, the witches. Yeah, we have some real good fucking. Uh, we have some fucking bangers this week too. Keeping going on the Patreon, which people we are almost uh, like uh, about two hundred away from doing the episode two, and we have we haven't narrowed down to either guns or an eating competition. Yeah, for the for the next one, that'll be a good one. Patreon.com, and we did the live stream. Thank you to everyone who came out to that on the Patreon. But yeah, that was fun. <laughs> so this was kind of like yeah i'm sure everyone saw this like going viral but it's just i feel like we have to talk about it because we, we, we were like sort of 
Witch- it, we give it to the witches. Yeah. Well, we're sort of, yeah, we are sort of like, um, I don't know the right way to put it, but like, we are almost a witch-oriented podcast at this yes. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which podcast talks about more witches more than us? <laughs> which old witch? Which podcast? Which old podcast? But these, so this stunned nurse, I caught this witch holding a carcass eating ritual on my security camera, and basically, there's these witches. And uh, they have this ritual where they basically eat like raw dead animals and shit like this. Yeah. And the, the to me, and then she caught it on camera. And then obviously some people are being apologists for it, like, oh, you know, maybe it was an animal. And it was like, but the witches wear wigs, right? Yeah, they're wearing these like weird wigs, <laughs> and they were half naked. They're half naked. and They're wearing wigs, right? So it's obviously. But I, I would like to see the video because she's like, she said they're eating it, but the closest I saw was like they grabbed the hoof, which is still nasty to grab like the hoof and put it. They could be near doing some. Burial ritual or whatever, yeah. yeah. But the idea that was like making me laugh was imagine, you know, your chick like she's a starts starts out in horoscopes before you know she's naked eating fucking, just like a rotting deer, carcass? a rotting beaver, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a rotting beaver carcass in the backyard, and you're like, what? You're like, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I got sick of horoscopes. I moved on to crystals, <laughs> and the crystals told me to do this. Yeah, I moved on to crystals, and I'm still depressed. So we're gonna go check out what happens when I eat a deer carcass. Yeah, the, the one witch that showed up like you know i was kind of just thinking this would be a crystal stuff it's like take your clothes off and eat the beaver if you want to be a witch put on the wig we're going hunting put on the wig and eat your carcass are you a witch or not a witch yeah i was trying to find like i felt like there was some sort of angle here like to promote something but and it's fake but like i can't really i don't really know what's going on with this one It's, it's very bizarre to me I think it's just witches that got out of control. They started doing one thing, the next thing you know, they're eating carcasses. Yeah. That's you think how they it actually goes. ate. You think they <laughs> You know how sick you would get? Imagine Oh my god, you would get Imagine you're in the hospital. Not if like, you have witchcraft that is f- fending you off though. That's the thing, right? <laughs> Well, unfortunately, there's this thing called reality. The amount of girls that are into witch stuff is out of control, man. No, I believe that. That's what I'm saying. Is maybe this is like their last foray into witch stuff because they're like that's the, that's the tip of the iceberg. That's if you were into like the manliness. If you're into manliness stuff, yeah. The last step is you're jacking off a dude. <laughs> if you're into witch stuff, the final form of witches is rolling around in a field in the middle of a small town eating beavers. Oh my god. This is crazy. It was like the deer was so rotten, too. Like, it wasn't even like it just died. Like, it was missing half of its body. <laughs> it's the nastiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and then we, before we go, we will uh, award Goat of the Week. My frugal husband pre- pretends to be poor so we can get free groceries <laughs> from the food bank. So I just want to say, this is, this is a little over the top. This is the real top G. I love this guy. <laughs> Danny probably doesn't appreciate this. I like a guy that knows how to get a deal. He takes what he wants. <laughs> The woman posts online. She's not happy. She says that they make 200 grand a year. This guy's going to the food bank, and they don't even need food. Yeah, they don't need food. They can afford food. Honestly? He's just like, there's food for free, so why would I go buy it like a fucking rube? The guy likes a deal, and apparently when she gets mad at him, she goes, her husband accused her of overreacting, being vindictive, and threatens to go back to the food bank. I mean, he literally goes and like pour, puts soot on his face, and he like, <laughs> get, he's like doesn't shower for three days. And he so puts he on go, grubby clothes. Yeah, grubby clothes, and he's like, he takes their shitty car. I love him. Or whatever, just so you can go to the food bank to get like... Dude, I respect a guy that's fucking rich and still cheap. It's yeah, like my, yeah. it's my favorite type of guy. Yeah, this is, <laughs> don't get me wrong, me too. Two, this oh, is 300 grand a year using coupons. This is pathological. This isn't using coupons. Like literally the wife's like on Facebook, the, the food bank is like, we got to re-up of all this fresh food. And then he just like <laughs> went there. He threatens though. Like she'll be like, hey, uh, fucking, I'm not going to make dinner tonight. And he was like, don't make me do yeah. it. <laughs> he goes, fine, don't. Yeah, don't. He, I mean, goes, he goes, they just had a big restock over at the food <laughs> bank. Do whatever you want. I'm going to be eating bunt cakes all night. And he keeps urging her to stop interfering with his choices. <laughs> I'm a man. I'm the man of the house. I can make some choices. I I honestly feel like this is what because I think they were together. You for, get that itch for, for a deal, sep- no, but also 17 <laughs> years into a relationship, you're like sometimes like you know you need you, a thrill. You think you need you a need thrill. A, I think you need a thrill, and you need just some piss sort of off. friction. So you go. You're yeah, pissing her off. You it's a really piss her off. I'm gonna start shopping at the food bank. That's option one. Option two is like you just fucking like he's getting the itch. Like yeah. he's just like his wife comes home and she's like, oh, you know, I, I bought groceries full. Price and he's just like fuck. Like, yeah, uh, I gotta. Now he's like, I've gotta make this back up. 
Like, how am I going to, like, right. make this back up? He's like, if I buy another box of cereal, then I've put those together, I, you basically got 50% off. Like, this, like, he might actually have a thing where it's like, it just pains him. It's legitimately the pathological. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's, like, an actual, like, mental problem he has. He can't buy something unless it has a deal. Yeah. And this is even a, is this classified as a deal? <laughs> Like you're like it's deal of the century. <laughs> Everything's free because it's kind of best passes best before day. It definitely, it's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> I got some good Tulpa stuff on the Patreon too. Come hang out with us on the Patreon. I'm gonna try and convince Ryan to call this guy. Come meet us, San Diego. Come watch me in San Diego next weekend. Danny Mullen's gonna be at the Saturday shows, and the tickets are about 75 percent sold out. So get them yay, while they're hot. Yay. Danny, aren't you doing a show? I'm doing uh, July 7th in Poughkeepsie. Yeah. Laugh it up comedy. And I'm actually doing a show August 11th and 12th in Burlington, Ontario. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yuck yucks. That's cool. Yeah. I'm going to be back there. So I just Okay. Sweet. It. So, patreon.com slash the boys guest piece.